Hey guys, so I've just released a new minor revision to uh, 3252. It just fixes one bug and provides pre-built Android export templates and the Android library if you want to build Android modules. Um, this video I'm going to go over importing these templates and exporting to Android from the beginning. So uh, stick around and we'll get to that. So the first thing you're going to do is come to the website and download the export templates. Um, when you have the export templates downloaded, you're going to go into the engine and click editor and manage export templates. Uh, if you already have them installed, you're going to want to click on install and click OK and then install from file and then go to your downloads where you downloaded it. And you, switch to all files and you'll have the templates.tpz.zip. Import that. And you've got all the export templates inside the engine. So now with that done, if you go to export and you create a Android preset, you'll see you'll get these errors here. ADB not found, OpenJDK jar signer not found, and debug key store not configured. So we're going to do a few things. First thing is uh, ADB, so that requires Android Studio. So you're going to go download an Android Studio. Uh, I already have the, I already have the installer here. So let's go. So we're going to install Android Studio here. Uh, we want the virtual device. Just keep it default location or put it wherever you want it, but if you change this, remember where it is, I'm not going to be able to tell you where that is. Uh, create a shortcut if you want. Uh, I don't I don't think I'm ever going to go into the studio to be honest, so let's just go into there and install this. And the next thing we're going to need while that installs is OpenJDK, so I like Adopt JDK uh, personally. Uh, adopt OpenJDK. Uh, I chose JDK 11 and Hotspot. That's just my choice. You choose whatever you like. Um, so once you download that, you're going to have your file here. Uh, you're going to open the installer, which will look something like this. And then you're going to click Next. You're going to click I Accept. You can click Next. Uh, I usually set Java Home because that will be useful later. And if you don't do it now, it might be a pain later. Um, click Next. And then you click, in, click Install. And click finish. And then you're done with the open JDK. Then Android Studio setup is done. Click next. And you're going to need to start this at least one time. And this is to just generate local app data. So when you first start up, you're going to get something like this missing SDK. You're going to want to pick your SDK and uh, API 30. There was another option here too. Um, it's leftover data. I'm not entirely sure what it was. I think it was checked. So just choose the settings you want. Um, I think at the beginning of this, you're given an option um, whether you want basic or custom. And I chose custom and chose my own stuff. I think you can just choose basic and it'll give you what you need. But click next, install the SDK, hit finish. It will download, it will install. Okay, so once this is done, you click finish and you can just close out of Android Studio. So now we're almost done. Um, you're going, if you go here and go to back to export, um, this you see, we still got those three warnings, but we can make a couple of them go away. Go. So go to editor at the top and then editor settings. And at the bottom on the left side, click Android. So for ADB, you're going to want to go to your Android SDK, which usually sits in user, uh, users, username, uh, app data. And if you don't see it, just type it in. Like so then local Android SDK platform tools adb.exe. Click OK. Next one is jar signer. This is going to be where you get it from your JDK. So if you install it at the same place I did, it's going to be C, program files, adopt open JDK, JDK 11, bin, 
and then look for jar signer exe here and it's gonna be very similar uh, on any other platform you're just gonna to go to the folder find the file name that you need and click open so now the last thing we need to do is this debug key store so you'll notice now if we go here debug key store not configured it's the last thing we need so what we're going to do, this is very simple, so when you, you're going to click this Windows button and um, I don't know where the run command is, so right click it and click run. That's what we're going to do. So right click your Windows icon and click run. Um, if you're on any other platform, you probably know how to get to your terminal. So go inside this box, type in CMD and hit enter it will open up this terminal window. Now you might have uh, Ubuntu for Windows running if you have a different terminal preference, obviously do this your way. So this is going to be very simple. So if I look inside this directory, uh, there's a debug.keystore. That's what we're going to be creating right now. So let's delete that. I can't remove it. I don't, oh, did, was that the command? Did I actually, oh, I guessed it right, nice. Okay, so let's create the debug.keystore. It's fairly simple. Um, all we need to do is here. So this is just, um, I Googled debug key store, first thing that came up. Uh, you just need this first one. You, you literally can just copy paste this. So this will have stuff like passwords and aliases and stuff like that here. Um, but you don't have to worry about that right now. You're gonna play with that for release here, for release key store. Do the same, but choose different things. So we're going to go back to this terminal and we're going to paste it in. So in Windows, the CMD paste is right click. I don't know what the keyboard command is, but you can right click it. Then click enter. You're going to get a bunch of questions here. So name, organizational unit, um, cool factory on Windows Dragon Bones, name of your city. Uh, let's go Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, and then YES. It's going to do a thing and it's going to say storing debug.keystore. And if you look, debug.keystore is now returned to the place. So, final step go back into editor, editor settings, export on the side, Android, and in debug keystore, go to your debug key store and add it to the stack and hit close and now we can export the APK so what we're going to do here is we're going to click um, after we create the Android Android I'm going to leave all these as bit default options I'm sure there are uh, guides on how this works the only thing I'm going to change is the class name com dot go dragon bones and game name uh, test the test. I click export project, and then we will go to uh, documents builds, and we're going to call this test.apk. All right, now that that's done, we are completely good to go. Notice how this has Android controls, so this should, or mobile controls, so this should give us a working experience. Export. Export project. Is it gonna work? Looks like it might be working this time. So what happened there was I did not restart Godot after install installing everything. There we go. That one looked like it worked properly. So um, make sure that after you install your Android Studio and your OpenJDK that you restart Godot and it'll pick up uh, path variables and stuff. Uh, so now let's go back to our builds. Directory, now we got test.apk. So let's copy this and let's put that on our device. Copy this. Now let's try this again. There we go. That's better. All right. So now we're going to paste this APK in and we're going to jump over to the device.
Okay. So now that we're inside our file manager, we can take this test.apk here and we're going to install it. Now it's going to give you a warning probably and you're going to want to click install anyway. And then after it's installed, my MIUI is going to do a bit virus scan on it. Let's move this again. See, and I always send unknown apps because especially if it's my own, I want Google to stop warning me. Okay, so now uh, we got our Android build here and this works really well. And as always, guys, feel free to like and subscribe and join me on our Discord where you can get more information on all of this type of stuff and ask me questions directly if you don't understand something. Um, also, feel free to stay tuned because I will be showing off more of my personal game project, uh, which is a Mario Maker clone, which you can see in the background I'm currently adding a world builder to. So, see you next time.